Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mom AJ, model, actress, and social entrepreneur. Circumstances are temporary, your purpose is not. And though we may all have been dealt with different circumstances in life, our experiences as women is universal. This is a safe space for women to be able to divulge their personal stories, share their life lessons, and tell us how they overcame their various obstacles. The goal here is to empower women to fulfill their life purpose by learning from others. Join the movement that celebrates the tenacity of women healing through storytelling. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Victory Over Circumstance. I'm Mom AJ, and I appreciate you guys so much for your positive uh, feedback and your views on the topics that I've discussed so far. Obviously, we are going in on mental health. We're talking about our life stories, and it's just been really amazing to see the feedback and read about all that you guys are going through. Um, I encourage you to follow me on Instagram at Mame Aj. That's at M A M E A D J E I. See the posts that I've been posting. Um, I will be updating on all Victory Over Circumstance happenings on there. And of course, take a listen back to the the last episode with our guest Eugenia Washington. That conversation was hilarious. And I mean, I could have cried too, you know, her life story was amazing. So definitely take a um, listen to the last episode and watch the videos on YouTube. Every podcast episode will have an accompanying video. So definitely get on YouTube, type in my name or victory over circumstance, and you will see the video component. So thank you guys so much. Just wanted to say thanks and let's jump right into it. Okay. All right. So with this episode, I just wanted to kind of go over some things that have been, you know, on my mind and my heart for the past couple of months, especially with uh, everything that's been going on. You know, ever since the George Floyd incident, or rather his murder, there have been such a rise in conscious evolution. Like, I feel like all of our conscience has been tapped. We are finally waking up to the problems of this world. Some people are finally realizing that racism is real. It's not something that black people were just complaining about all this time, you know? And it's embedded in our society. It's so embedded that you don't even see how it has been affecting all sectors, um, all sectors of the world, all sectors of, of industry. And in my industry, specifically in the fashion and modeling industry, um, systemic racism is very much present. And you don't see, we didn't realize how it's present and it's living in all these different crevices of these um, industries of our whole world, right? And so with that said, I just wanted to kind of give light, shed light on the issues that face my industry that I work in, because that's what I can speak on the most, right? This is what I have experience in. This is what I've dealt with for the past almost 10 years that I've been modeling, um, always being f- treated and feeling like a secondhand citizen, not feeling like I am valued enough or just given enough care as opposed to my white ca- counterparts. So I decided to write a letter to the fashion industry and I published it on medium.com. So again, please read the letter on medium.com. I kind of just go in about the grievances that I have with the fashion industry, as well as, you know, everything that it's done for me. But then I want to also present a solution to the problem. I don't ever want to just complain about things. I want to always be a part of the solution. How are we making things work? How can we make things better so that the girl that comes behind me, comes after me, is not dealing with the same problems? Tyra, 
Tyra Banks, Naomi Campbell. They have and other countless, you know, black um, figures, prolific black figures in the industry have always talked about how there is racism in our industry. They keep they have talked about these problems since time and it's 2020. I should not still be talking about the same problems. It is 2020. Why am I still talking about the same things that these women in the past have talked about? So my point is this. I do not want this problem to continue any further. And I think this is the right climate. This is the right time to have these kinds of discussions when finally it seems like the world has opened up their ears and opened up their eyes and their hearts finally to hearing us and seeing us and for and most importantly, believing us that there is a problem, has always been a problem, and there are ways to finally make things better if we can all just come together and make genuine changes that can outlast this time period, that it's not just a knee-jerk reaction to the times. I really want to be a part of real, sustainable changes that can outlast a certain era, if that makes sense. I want it to be real. I want it to last longer than just these two months because it is December now. And when everything happened, it was maybe May. Um, and I feel like all of these brands, all these companies were finally saying, okay, we know we can do better. How can we do better? This is what we want to do, da, 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 da. And it's December and already so many companies have lost steam. So many brands have returned. And I think I read an, uh, I think I read an, um, an article. I'm not sure if it was Teen Vogue or what publication it was, but they were basically saying how, if you go back on social media, like people's feeds have gone back to even even worse than pre George Floyd um, era, if you call it, and that's a problem. That's a problem. This basically means that everyone's feed has gone right back to white, has gone right back to non inclusive, has gone right back to non diverse, non, uh, having no diversity. And I'm just like, it just shows how all of this time, all of this, oh, we're, we're here for you guys, we're listening, all of these <laughs> black squares, we're just ingenuine and just fake. It was fake. It's kind of disappointing. It really is disappointing. We have to do better, guys. We actually have to do better. So with that said, I'm going to just jump in and read y'all the letter so that we can get into the nitty gritty so that I can really just get into the actual problems that I personally face in the industry and what I am working on now with the Black Beauty roster, um, which I'll explain more later after the letter. So here it goes. I titled this The Letter to the Fashion Industry, Do Better. <laughs> Dear fashion industry, and I'm speaking, when I say I, mostly I'm speaking as our collective voice. This is the models, the black creatives, those who are unheard, those who don't have a voice or don't feel like they can speak out on a lot of topics. As a black model, I have a love-hate relationship with you that is toxic and needs fixing. I love you and all that you have provided me. I am glad to be a part of an industry that allows me to express myself daily through art and masterful creativity. I love to work with amazing visionaries who become friends and travel the world, and I am truly grateful. However, I have cried to you for many years about the pain you have also inflicted on my brothers and sisters and I, but you never cared to listen. When I would speak up about the many injustices I faced, you would blacklist me and deem me problematic. You silenced me my, and my pain. I challenged you over and over and you gaslighted me. 
time and time again. Perhaps it was all in my head. Perhaps I was blowing it out of proportion. Having me second guess my own experiences and judgments of utterly blatant racist situations. Then telling me simply, you ought to be grateful to be working at all. It took the brutal deaths of innocent black lives shaking up the world, searing protests, a global pandemic halting operations, and the world's eyes on you for you to finally acknowledge my true existence and pain. In response, we have now all seen companies left and right rush to post letters of solidarity and support for the black community to save face. But my question is, what more beyond posting black squares, impassioned captions, and various performative acts will you all do now to ensure that everyone on your sets have the dignity of safety and comfort while working? My grievances. Racial injustice in our industry and workplace is unfortunately way too com common for comfort. Black models have continuously been turned away from castings and agencies because you, quote unquote, had enough black girls at the moment. We have been ridiculed for, your, for our distinct features. Our hair has been pulled, tugged, and damaged for your pleasure because professional hairstylists could not handle our textures. How professional are they? Our faces have been made to look ashy or too dark or way too light for your, our complexions or plainly denied service because, again, professional makeup artists did not know how to do our makeup. We have been forced to enter work with our own hair stashes, makeup kits, nude negligee and lingerie, shoes, clothes that match our skin tones because you didn't have them, you didn't have them and could not be bothered to even provide them. We have been edited to look shades lighter and at times even told that we weren't dark enough. We weren't dark enough? <laughs> We have been told that we look like white women dipped in chocolate. We have been told our bodies were too thick and voluptuous at every turn. That we weren't so-called high fashion enough for the runway or for the big magazine covers. We have been put under glass ceilings and promised careers that we somehow can never attain because our agents fail to push us as much as they push our white counterparts. We are simply tired of our bodies being used as tokens to prove your brand diversity. We are tired of being hired only when it benefits your pockets to be inclusive. We are not accessories to be sprinkled in a campaign or your agency's boards to fill quotas, to fulfill quotas. My skin is not a trend or a device for your promotion. We cannot be used to sell and promote your works when you won't even stand up for my life. We are not yours to play with, period. Okay, period. For far too long, we have been manipulated to believe that we had to play along without speaking up for fear of retribution. We were made to believe that we had to accept these injustices and microaggressions as the rules of the game. It's just, it's just what it is. It's just fashion. Deal with it. No. We were taught to shrug it off and to move on in order to maintain our livelihood. We have learned to survive in a world that basically does not accommodate us or bend for us. At the end of the day, I believe that proper representation matters and media representation matters, especially because in general, depictions of us in the media has practically shaped the world's perception of our people and often not so positively. Proper representation though, is what we seek and deserve. I believe this is a tool that will aid us in changing the perceptions once held of us which can hopefully and ultimately lead us 
to the dismantling of systems that have historically oppressed us. In order to ensure that we are being adequately and properly represented means that participants in the fashion industry must make sure to hire black people on all levels of their workforces, from retail to corporate to executive levels. We demand that you all participate in different campaigns, such as my girlfriends pull up for change, check them out on Instagram, to disclose your current workforce's racial backgrounds and racial breakdowns and ways in which you actively plan to hire more qualified black people in various positions at your companies. Simply show us the receipts. Show us how you're trying to make things better, okay? Not only will this show that you care and are working on these issues, but you will in turn empower a legion of black professionals and their families. We will see the ripple effects of having more of us with seats at the tables that we once danced around, but were never allowed to sit at or genuinely contribute to. We're not looking from the outside in anymore. Give me a seat at the table. But if anything, I'm gonna build my I'm gonna build my table. I'm tired of asking. Next, we must address the incessant adherence to the European beauty standard. Yes, things have slowly changed in the past few years. More girls can work with braids and natural hair than ever, but we are not fully liberated, and that's a problem. Please do not require us to do to be anything but who we are for your covers, for your shows and campaigns. Listen to us. Please listen to us. When we tell you that we are uncomfortable and make sure that we're not penalized for it. Lastly, I am personally very passionate about fighting for justice as you can see, and, and people's access to it. I am determined to use my platforms in any way that I can to push for the reimagining of the black narrative. As a model, I feel it is my duty now to use the ways in which I am portrayed to shift the world's perspective of black people, black women, black beauty, and black lives. I want to work t to be intentional and purposeful. I hope that you all show up for us in the ways that you have vowed to in order for this to work. Because these brands have said a whole lot. They have said a whole lot and have posted a whole lot about how they are listening and they're here for us and they want to do better. But like I said before, show us the receipts. So I hope that you guys all show up for us in the ways that you have vowed to in order for this to work. So requests and actionable steps to move forward. More than to tell you what I have problems with, I wish to suggest solutions and partake in conversations that will lead to real quantifiable change. We as models of all backgrounds, ethnicities, sizes, looks, abilities, genders, etc., and then as back black models specifically, because I can only speak from a black model's perspective. We're open to having honest and, op honest and open dialogue on how best to confront these issues together. So I'm basically saying, we're open, we're here, we're waiting for y'all to hit us up. Let us know if you want to do better. I've worked with brands who have, want, who have asked me, like, Mame, how can we represent you better? How can we do better in terms of making sure that our products are geared toward, you know, mo models of color? and specifically black models. And I appreciated that so much. So just ask, open your mouth. Participants of the fashion industry, that includes designers, creative directors, everyone uh, in, the, in the fashion industry, show up. So before you reach out to your talent seeking their perspectives, we ask that you also do your due diligence and research to understand the many complexities of our plight in this world at large and then in this industry.
Before you reach out to your talent seeking the perspectives, though, we ask that you also do your due diligence and research to understand the many complexities of our plight in this world at large and then in this industry due to the systems laid out before we all got here by white supremacist thoughts and principles. And to then determine your own bias and how you have contributed to the systems present in the industry today. This will allow us to start these conversations grounded in genuine understanding and show your willingness to learn. Basically, all of this can't be put on just me. I need you to do the work too. I need you to do your due due diligence in, in doing the research and showing that you know what we're dealing with. And you're not just showing up to my doorstep and saying, what can we do better? I need to see that you actually even care to have done your research, to actually know what I go through in the first place so that we can figure out solutions. And so we need everyone on board in order for this to work. Number one, agents. We need you to advocate for your models. We need you to advocate for your models, to receive adequate care on set. That includes making sure that there are professional hair and makeup artists that are knowledgeable in black and POC faces and hair textures. We need you to hold clients and those that, are, that they hire for shoots at a standard that is acceptable for everyone, not just white talent. We need you to be on our side and to push us forward in our careers fairly and equally. Demand that we get paid a separate rate if in any instance we do not have, we, we do have to do our own hair and or makeup on set. I need to get paid. So demand a separate rate. This is important. Number two, casting directors. We need you to be un- impartial and not be racist in your selections. Skin color or ethnicity should never determine one's ability to perform, okay? Nor should it ever be used to achieve an aesthetic. That's just foul. Hire models based on merit and desired outcomes. I encourage you to see that you can never have too many black models. We're not an aesthetic. We're not here just to sprinkle a dab of black magic in your white potion. I'm a whole person with a, with a mind, with a story, with background, with substance that can add to your campaigns, not just be a color additive. Number three creative directors and photographers, we need you to work with all models to amplify our voices and to tell stories worth telling, show faces worth seeing, directing a completely new narrative of blackness and fashion, thus humanizing us again. Not using black and brown models to add edge to your editorials. editorials. Basically, Hire black people on your teams, okay? Number four, designers, clients, brands, companies, marketing, and ad agencies. We need more black people and POC, people of color, in leadership roles, including all levels of your workforce. That's retail, corporate, and executive levels. We need black people and people of color in all those positions, okay? not just at the end, who are sensitive to racist marketing tactics and can express their concerns without fear earlier on in the creative process. This will hopefully translate to less racist, insensitive, and downright out-of-touch advertisements that hurt communities of color with their perpetuation of stereotypes and prejudice getting the final go-ahead to hit the markets. If there were more black people and people of color in these positions, especially in the uh, companies that we're working for, in the marketing and ad agencies that we're (laughs) working for, there will be less of those instances where, you know, H&M, for example, 
king of the jungle sweatshirt was on a black, was on a white kid. But then the sweatshirt that had monkey on it was on the black kid. And there's been countless of other examples. Uh, Kendall Jenner ending police brutality with a Pepsi and trivializing legitimate causes like Black Lives Matter. There wouldn't be any of those mishaps if there were Black people on all levels of those structures in those companies. Do you understand? J. Crew with their Black model that had undone hair. She basically showed up to set and I think they just let her just get up there. They didn't even touch her hair. And you could tell. There basically wouldn't be any more of those instances if there were black people in those rooms that could say, hey, that doesn't look right. Hey, maybe we shouldn't do that. Hey, that's not going to fly well in the black community. Instead of then doing these crazy things and then asking for our forgiveness after the fact and then issuing a, a long-winded apology and then doing it again you feel me <laughs> oh god and white models and afro wigs and abnormally tanned skin dreads on mo on white models on the runway but no models of color Black face sweaters and hoodies from Gucci and countless other situations of blatant disregard and disrespect of black people and culture. Like, let's stop. There are simply too many levels of approval for ads and commercials to go through for this to be continuously excused. It is unacceptable. Keep your apologies. So moving forward, I just want us to consider these questions. How can we hold you, the fashion industry, accountable for your support? What can we deem as change? And what will you do differently personally in your own life and then organizationally in your companies to combat racism? And then what are agencies prepared to do to stand with mo models and advocate for us? This is not just on models. This is not just on the clients. What are you as agencies, as the middlemen prepared to do to help us? And then finally, we need all of you. We need you to be actively anti-racist in all that you do in order to create real change. Your black models, friends, colleagues, and family deserve love, respect, and dignity just like everyone else. It's 2020. And may our vision be clearer and actions be louder. Let us all do better. Signed, Mom AJ. So that was, in essence, the letter. I had a little, a little bit in there. And again, you can find it on medium.com. Just type in my name, Mame Ajay, and you will find it. It is called Let Us Do Better, Letter to the Industry. And just piggybacking off of that, it is just, it is just a damn disgrace that we're still having to talk about these things. I'm honestly tired of having to explain over and over to white people that certain things that they do or say isn't right. But I get it. You know, we have to continue to educate them because if you just don't know, you don't know. And a lot of the issues that we face in America, in the world, is all rooted in ignorance. At the end of the day, racism is ignorance. It is ignorance because you don't know about another race or culture. Race in itself is a whole social construct that is just fake. It doesn't even exist. But that's another podcast, okay? That's another episode. We're not even going to go there. But back to, my, back to what I was saying is that Racism is based in fear because of ignorance. So if we fail to learn about each other, fail to listen to each other, then we're going to continue to repeat these same old and tired cycles. And I'm over it. But so I will continue to educate. I believe my purpose is to educate anyway. So I'm going to continue to do that. But please don't force any of your black friends 
to teach you or to explain things to you. Do your research, find out, read a book. (laughs) There's so many books out there. Read a book. There are so many guides on Instagram that um, are basically helping people learn about the nuances and the, the depths of racism and, and how embedded in our society is and how it's creeping up in every single facet of our lives, just like it is in my industry, right? And that's, this is one other thing that I'm realizing is the reason why I'm not being catered to or accommodated to, uh, to properly in my industry, again, is because of ignorance and also because these professionals, these hair and makeup artists, do not know how to do my hair, how to do my makeup, because they weren't taught it in the beauty schools. They weren't even taught it in these beauty schools. That's because they didn't even think that I was important enough for you to be, <laughs> like, they didn't even think I was important enough for them to teach how to do my hair and makeup, right? Black people have for so long been a second class citizen that, like, they don't even teach how our textures. They don't teach our complexions, how to do our complexions. But if you are a makeup artist and you're a professional, I would hope that you know about the curly wheel and the color theory, knowing that, you know, orange cancels out purples and grays, you know, and yellows, all of that. If you're a professional, you know this. So you should know how then to work on my skin tone, right? But you'd be surprised, guys. You'd be surprised the, the number of times I've sat in chairs and have not been, have had to do my own makeup. I had a campaign um, in South Africa, and this is South Africa, so I'm thinking, oh, South Africa is black. It's majority black. It's Africa. <laughs> it's a majority black country. So surely the makeup artist would know how to do my makeup But no, I was sadly mistaken. I had to show up on that set. Five out of six of the days, I did my own makeup. I sat in that chair and the makeup artist would just be like, oh girl, oh yeah, yeah, you've you've got it. You know what you you like. (laughs) That's my terrible South African accent. Excuse me, sorry. And I was just like, girl, if you don't go over, come over here and do my makeup. The first day I was just showing you how to do it, like how I preferred. Because at the end of the day, only you know how you like your face best. You know your face best. You know your hair best. So it's best to teach them how to do it and um, so that they can do it the way that you prefer. But not to teach you how to do your job. No, that's not what I'm here for. I'm not here to teach you how to do your job. I can teach you how I like things personally, but I'm not here to teach you how to do your job and I'm not here to do your job. And if I am doing your job, I should get paid. No, I think so. So it's it's a very layered problem. It's a very layered problem. And I just feel like it is time to do better. Again, I have sat in chairs in LA, you know, where I, I will say this, in the past four years that I've been in Los Angeles, um, things have gone a lot better. I, I can comfortably sit in a chair and not have to worry about showing how the makeup artist should, you know, like showing the makeup artist my specific colors that I like to use. At the very least, I will say that they are getting better. And I think that's a large part of that is because we have brands like Fenty Beauty and um, <laughs> Fenty Beauty. I don't know what other makeup, or makeup brands have like 40 shades. I think Makeup Forever and a bunch of other brands that have um, like a big variety of tones and like dealing with um, light and warm. What's it called? Warm and cool tones. and light all the way to the darkest of dark. Thank God we have brands now that are accommodating everyone and not just up and, you know, not just people up until a caramel color, like the color of this couch that I'm sitting on. 
it's like, did y'all not know that we were here? Did y'all not know that we were that, like there are there have been black people all around you of different skin tones. Why are you guys now creating shades to accommodate all of us? I just, I can't. But at least, at least we're finally being catered to on the brand side of things. So I just need the professionals who can buy these things to know how to then apply it, right? So I put out a post on my Instagram basically saying that I wish I could put together a directory of professionals that actually knew how to do black hair and all people of color hair textures and makeup. Because I reached out to my agency, Lips LA, and I was like, hey, I need you guys to just basically advocate for me. I need you guys to make sure that when I'm hired on a job, that there are professionals there that actually know how to do my hair and makeup so that I'm not sitting there doing somebody else's job. Because you will never show up on set with a photographer that's also doing makeup. Sometimes. <laughs> but that's if they do both. But you'll never show up to set where a photographer is cleaning the floor or the makeup artist is then picking the clothes or the stylist is then taking the photos. Everyone has their job for a reason because you are trained in that particular um, craft and so you are brought on set to do that job. I am here to be the model, not to be the makeup artist and not to be the hairstylist. So if I do that, I should get paid. Correct? Correct. So I reached out to my agency and told them exactly that. And they said, okay, let us know what um, makeup artists you've worked with or hairstylists you've worked with that we can suggest to these brands when they decide to work with you. And I said, great, let me send you a list. So that's what prompted me to put that post on Instagram asking um, for basically all people, all professionals that are actual professionals and know how to do all makeup and hair to just put to like, put their, put their Instagrams and put their contacts so that I could create some kind of directory because that's what I was asking was like, I wish there was some kind of like directory or some kind of uh, roster that had everyone on there that we could then push out to these brands so that they could, you know, pick from. So after I posted that, that post about, you know, putting uh, the directory, I got hit up by these two women who were also working on the same thing. And I thought, this is perfect. Like, we don't need to be working on the same thing separately. We just need to band together and make this a thing. Let's make this work. Let's do something. Let's really create some change. So they were starting something called the Black Beauty Roster. And I'm like, this is perfect. This is exactly what I was thinking to do. Like, this is wh what I was working on. So we joined forces and it's been amazing. And uh, we're basically, the two women basically, they have their own app called the Bonti app. Which was a, which is a social, it's called the Bonti app, which is a mobile beauty servicing app. So basically, if you need your hair done, your makeup done, and you're in a town that you don't know anybody, you can go on the app and find a professional that can come to you. They're already vetted. They already know what their stuff, and they just come by and do your, your service that you need. And I thought this is brilliant. So to basically create now a roster is like, duh. But we are more so amped up about the issues. Why we have to do this? Because we continue to face the issue of not being accommodated to, not being cared for in 
our place of work, which for me is on set. So we've been working hard on this roster and I would advise you if you're creative, if you're a model, if you're a stylist, if you are a hairstylist, makeup artist, anything, if you're a creative, you don't have to be black by any means. You just have to know how to do all hair and makeup, right? All hair and makeup, not just white people <laughs> or people that look like you, you know? If you know how to do all hair, all makeup, and all, if you can service all people, please go on www.blackbeautyroster.com and put your information in there and you'll be added to the roster so that you can also be a part of the change. And when a company wants to hire people for a set, they have this roster now that they can pick from and it'll have, you know, it'll have um, people's level of experience from amateur to like veteran, 20 year veteran to, you know, whatever. It will show all your level of experience. You're going to be able to put your portfolio in there so that people can see what your, um, your work looks like. And we're not trying to be an agency. We're not trying to be a middleman. We're just trying to provide a resource to brands, to anybody that's looking for service that can work on everyone, right? So that's been great. And I just want to close with this. I am so proud of everyone that has genuinely made changes in their organizations within their brands and, and within themselves to be more sensitive to black folk and black problems and issues that we deal with and that have been genuinely trying to do better. I appreciate you, I see you, and I'm grateful for you. We have for too long dealt with issues silently for fear of losing our jobs if we spoke out. And that's not cool. I cannot sit here in silence anymore. I cannot sit here and not address issues that bother the hell out of me anymore. I have to be vocal and I have to use my platform as I hope you guys will continue to use your platforms to address the issues that are still facing us and to then come up with solutions. I've found my one way of addressing this issue head on with partnering with the Black Beauty roster. And I want you to think of different ways that you can um, combat this issue of systemic racism in your own corner of your industry, whatever industry that is. It doesn't have to be the fashion industry, but I'm talking to people that work in the fashion industry mostly because that's the world that I'm, I'm in. But this goes for, huh, this goes across the board. What can you do personally and then organizationally? What can you then implement to help people of all color, creed, religion, backgrounds succeed so that we're not tolerating a society that only puts white at the forefront, that only puts white people as the, the <laughs> at the center of it all. What can we do different? What can you do differently? So we'll just end it here and say, and I'll say that I'm gonna do my best to always, always, always use my platform to speak out against anything that is harmful to me and then to people that look like me. I take it very seriously. And I think this is something that we have to continue the uh, conversation going because if we don't, we're going to lose steam. A lot of these brands online and people that were so about the fight have lost the steam. And it doesn't just go away just because 
um, people aren't talking about it. You know what I mean? Like it's still there. The problem is still there. So we have to keep talking about it. We have to keep putting attention on it so that we can make real changes, real changes. So thank you guys for listening to my TED Talk, or in this case, my podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in again. Um, again, if you're listening to this, please go on YouTube and watch the replay of this and support that way. Follow me on Instagram at mameaj, M-A-M-E-A-D-J-E-I. And Follow up with everything that I've talked about, uh, www.blackbeautyroster.com to input your information. If you're a creative that wants to be included on the roster, please do that. And also, um, you can read the article that I wrote on medium.com. And actually, I just want to end with this is like, I wrote this letter just as a response to everything that was going on um, because I was really hurt by everything. And I was like, I'm tired of dealing with this. I need to like shed light on it. And it actually landed me an eight page feature in L'Officiale magazine. Okay. Okay. So I was like really proud of myself, but I wasn't even doing it for that. I was really just genuinely trying to get this like issue, some, some air. But this just goes to show that like people are watching you, people are listening to you and people value what you have to say. So please always share your story. Use your platforms to actually influence. And I had to hit up a lot of my friends, especially my white friends that had like millions of followers who were still posting about bikini pics at the time of George Floyd's murder, at the time of Breonna Taylor. And Breonna Taylor, the case is still going on. Like I had to really hit them up. Like you're an influencer. You're a so-called influencer. Influence. Actually use your influence. This would be the time. Shed light on the topic. Shed light on what's going on. Share resources. Do something. Do something. Don't just sit there and watch this shit happen. Not only is it insensitive, but it's just out of touch. And then you're going to lose the support of so many people that did look up to you. So I urge, I said that to say, I am urging you all to use your platforms to continue the conversations and to continue to put your foot on their necks about creating change. Let this all, let this, let what's happening usher us into a new time. When this pandemic is, is tamed because I don't think it's going to be over anytime soon when it is tamed, more tamed. I don't want us to go back to normal. I need us to create a new normal. I need us to go into a new world. I need us to create new status quos with everyone at the center, with everyone at the table, eating, learning, listening to each other and not just one type of people right? I need everyone to be given a voice, to be given space, to be themselves and to contribute to the world and society at large. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Victory Over Circumstance podcast. And if you're watching, thank you so much for tuning back in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below on what more you want me to talk about, what you want to see. And if you have any feedback and if you're listening, please do the same. Don't forget to subscribe, listen, and share. Share this podcast with your friends. You can listen to it on any platform that you listen to podcasts and continue to push the envelope, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening. I'll see you next time.